Hello friends, welcome to Intuits. Let's begin the class. Able to see my screen? Your screen is visible. So we we'll discuss about the extend method first, right? So extend method is to combine the both the list. So if I have a two list here, if I say the list dot extend inside that, if you put the second list, then it will combine both the list and it will give it out. That is the only method left on the list. Now we are discussing about Samir, the, Samir, sorry. Uh, For extend, what is the uh -huh. difference between extend and append? Append. See, append is inserting elements, right? Right. Just one one element or it is the same thing? Just... No, it's not the same thing. This is two lists you already have okay. and you are combining. Okay. Append is on the same list only. You are appending the value at the end of okay. it. It is not combining. Okay. It is only single method. Append and insert, right? Both you are inserting an element to the list. Okay. So here uh, we are discussing about the string methods. The first method is fine. So here if you are given the suites here, it is giving the index of this. Where it will be applicable actually? So suppose Suppose you have a let's take an example of an employee name. So there you have a first name and last name and with space. So somebody asks you to write a program to fetch the first name and last name individually. Then you should be able to use the find method to find the space where that index would be. And from there you can do the slicing so that you can find out both the stuffs, first name and last. I'm just giving a hint. I will I will give this assignment on today on this one. So you, so that you can use the find method too. Got the point? Makes sense, right? So let's take an example. Suppose one guy is there, this name is like this. It's a full name. Okay. And from here, his ask is to get the first name and get the last. How we will know that is first name and which is last name? You can assume that there is a space in there. So we need to find the space index. Then from there, we need to fetch this part. We need to fetch this so that you will get your first name and last name. That time, your find option will be real. That makes sense? Yes. Okay. Suppose this is you, you are giving uh, as seven. Suppose I am searching a layer character which is not present in the string. Okay. G is not there, right? It's not present. You must have. So then it will give you minus one. Just remember this. Okay. If the string is not found in the find, that it will give you the minus one as the output. So it is minus one means it is a the string is not present inside the string. Make sense? All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I think I have discussed about the upper. I think I discussed right. You can say example dot upper. Yes. Upper. Yes, upper load. So it will give you the output as okay. upper. Yeah. And suppose you say example dot lower, it will give you the lower case. All right. This two function is fine. Now the important function is your strip. Strip. What is strip? That's it. So now I am giving some space on the leading spaces. I'm giving some leading spaces. And I'm giving some trailing spaces also. So there are some space on the start, and there are some space on the end as well. Now, if I want to remove those space, then I will use function called example dot strip. There is a strip and upstrip. We'll discuss that. So strip. If I use now the example dot strip, and if you run this method, then it will just remove all the leading spaces and the trailing spaces and it will give the output not the individual inside the space just remember this point always okay strip method always used to remove the leading and the trail okay make sense yes and same that is a function called the extension portion of this is called l strip okay and there is a function called example dot r strip. So the strip, l strip, and r strip. So it will be like the left l strip means it will remove only the left part. Okay. And whereas the r strip it will be to the right part, something like that. So left strip and r strip, but but rarely use the l strip and r strip. A strip will be used. Okay, but there is an important trick here in L strip is I'll show you that, which is very much important, which is required. So suppose let's take I have a string like this A zero zero one four. Okay, 
and there is an optional parameter inside the strip is there so if you not give anything inside the strip then it will remove the leading and trailing space but there is an optional parameter is there suppose i'm giving a here so what we'll do here in this case it will remove a from the string itself it will output it will give you 001 okay this is also is possible inside the strips let's run this will give you the output as 001 but that should be either leading or trailing make sense if the a will be there in between that it will not remove only the leading starting one or the end one if it is there the string it will remove the strip as well make sense yes okay now Suppose another function I will say example dot your replace. Okay. So as you know the replace method, like suppose I want to replace A with B in the string method. So it will be B001. All right, very simple. Nothing more. All right. So let's let's come back to the original one. And the next function which I want to discuss is called split. Okay. Example dot split. If you not give any parameter inside the split, split means first it will just split the string and it will give the output. Okay. So if you're not giving anything inside the split, then the default character, the default delimiter is space. So whenever it found the space, it will just split from there. So there will be three outputs here. I love and switch space, separate one. The output will be in a list. So if you see the list, so one character is I, then love. Alright. Okay. That makes sense. Again, in the inside this place split, we can give comma, double quote, single quote, everything we can give. If the string is available like that. Then we can split based on that delimiter with the comma and everything. Does that make sense? So, if you are finding out first name and last name of a employee, then we can uh, use this. That, we can use the split, we can use the find, choice are anonymous. Okay. Are you good with this all these things? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Can you uh, I'm giving you an example one I think I did it, but still I want you to try this. Let me remove all these things. So let's take one customer name is there this one you will try now uh, let's take s 0012 okay what my condition here is that okay before to that let me introduce first to the if statement how to write the if that then i will give this example okay this, sorry so let's discuss about the conditional statement, the if statement, how we can write in Python. It's very simple. Okay. Suppose I'm saying a equals to, let's say I'm converting into an integer input function I'm picking. And suppose I'm saying enter my first number. Okay. 
and I'm saying B equals to INT input enter second number. So now I want to compare. Okay. So if A less than captain B or A equals to B, all this condition I want to check, then I want to print something. Then I can use my if statement here. If a greater than b then you have to put a colon here okay this is the syntax you need to follow in if if a greater than b then i can say print a is greater than b okay then i'll say else print B is greater than A. Okay. So this is called your if statement. So if your condition, then your statement. If this not has it, it will go to the else part. It will give you the print. Okay. Let's run this. So it is giving me enter the first number. So let's take 12, 23. So it is saying that B is greater than A. Right. And so we can extend is, uh, the word. There is a R missing, R missing and here uh, B in greater huh? spelling. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. This is just a text track. I'm just giving sir, an example. Sir, your but, screen your screen frozen for me. I don't know rest of uh, the rest of the other. For me, it was frozen. Is it is it the same thing for uh, everybody? No. Stop. It, it's fine for him. Yes, we don't get uh, see the output. Yeah, it stopped after. I mean, I think you're typing, but we don't see the output. We don't get the output. No, I'm not getting. I'm getting multiple answers. What is that problem exactly? Like you're able your to screen see, stopped. Not able to... I can I can listen you, but your screen stopped. I mean, after print, it's just frozen. This time still. We can see the code, but we can't see the output. The result. No, no offense on that, but for me, I am, I am good, Samir. I am getting everything, whatever you're doing. No offense okay. on the other end, but still. Yeah, for, for us, yeah, for me, yeah. Yeah. And now I'm getting. Um, then, yeah. then I think there could be an issue from now, your end, guys. Yeah, now I'm getting. No, no, yeah, now you are getting. I understand, but. Uh, if somebody is not getting the screen, it should be for everyone, right? Yes. There could be some issue from your end, maybe. That's fine. It's okay. okay. Now you are able to get it. I can, now yeah, I can. Now. Yeah. now let's run this. Now I'm saying 23, 35, and I'm saying the output is, let's say B is greater than A. Okay. So this is the way the if works. And here, the most important thing is when you are writing it, right? So if you see, I'm writing if a greater than b with the colon, then I'm writing the print by giving some indentation here. In Python, indentation is very much important. Okay. What does it mean? Let me explain you the indentation. When writing any kind of block of statement, the indentation is very much important. What does it mean? Let me explain. In pie charm, what will happen? Now, sometimes it will give you the output. Suppose I am saying if A is greater than B, if you put an enter, now automatically my cursor will come here. And it will take an indentation from here to here automatically. But suppose you miss that point and you just put a cursor here and you say if A greater than B and you start writing from here. Say A is greater than B. Okay. And to write it else also here. Else print B is greater than A. Already it is giving me error only, but let me run it. Okay, but you see the red lines are coming already. It is an error only. So if you run this, you will get a indented block error. This is quite common error in Python. Okay. 
expected the indentation. This is quite in always you will get once in a while you will get this error in Python. So it means that whenever you are writing a block of statements, you should put a indentation. What does it mean is that so you are starting the if here and the print should be inside the if. So it means that you need to put a tab here so that you will get say that this is inside the if block this print statement. Now else this is also needs to be indented. Then only it will work. Got it? Okay, sir. Yes. This makes sense, right? Okay. Now you can extend this uh, condition as well. Okay. So suppose A is greater than B, then I can check one more condition here. Suppose I say else if. Else if is something like here is called the A if. Okay. A if is I can say A equals to B. Okay, or a is double equal. Yeah. I'm just comparing if is a is equal to equal to b, then I'll say print a is equals to b as well. This condition also I can treat this. I can extend anything here. Elif. It's called the if. if. Now if I run this, it will ask you the number. So well, let's take I'm giving the first number as 10. Next number also 10. Then you will say the second part is executed. You will say A is equal to. Okay. So this is the way you can write your if statement. Very easy. Just you need to write the condition wherever it is required. Make sense? Are you good on this one? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now take an example of this. Right now just do it. Take a customer name with number as 0012. Question is, if customer is greater than customer number, customer name, so whatever one with greater than 12, then print something. This is not an real exercise, but I just want to see how we will check this. Whether the customer name is greater than 12. Is it possible? Just think once. Uh, length of customer name greater than 12. Can we use length? I'm not talking about the length. I'm talking about the okay. value as 12. We have a 12 right here inside. Yeah. Uh user split uh, take s out and then check exactly that's a good observation so we need to first of all first of all we need to get something out of this right i want the 12 first before to whatever is present here i just want to remove it first then only i can compare that what other customer name is greater than 12 or not greater than 12. right so how you do it We'll see first of all <coughs> the print first. Let's print it. So let's take customer underscore name dot split a strip, not slit strip. Okay, I then see. I will give here S. So S I'm removing from here, then I will get 002. Okay. Then this I can convert it into my integer. Then I can compare. In the rest part I'm not doing it. You can do it. Then after that, just convert it into integer. Then you can compare with the if statement. If this is greater than 12, then you print it something. Make sense? Yes. Very good. Yeah. So, but this S should be on the first or Maybe in the last, not in between. We can do it. The strip is always looks for the leading and your trailing spaces. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. Now we are done with this. Now let's discuss quite an important topic in Python or any programming language that is called the loops. Okay. In Python, there are 
before before coming to the loops what do you mean by loop here right so you need to understand the loop what is what exactly the loop is all about so loop is something like when you want uh, some operations to be continuous so needs to be started at and it stop at here something and till that time it should process some data that is called the loop hmm? that is called the looping process so there are two kinds of loops are available in python one is called your for loop and another one is called your while loop so both is exist and both you can use it so let's start with the for loop first so the for loop syntax is something like it's very simple okay so i say for any variable i can take so i g p whatever you want to take it variable in iterables then you can put a column here then you can put your do this or statement this is your syntax for any variable in iterables iterables can be your string list people range set we'll discuss about the set not now dictionaries this is also we'll discuss not now we have discussed about the string list tuple and range this part we already discussed these two are pending we'll discuss after the loop only but these are the iterables you can use inside the for loop okay so let's let's try and understand through an example okay so say my name let's take name equals to Oh, let's take and give an example of my name. Okay. So what I'll do now, I will loop through for a variable. Variable could be anything, i, g, p, whatever the name we can use. So i, not here, sorry. So let's take i in the iterables. Iterables now, this part iterables, this time I'm using the string. I will say the name of the string. So say I name. So I in name column. I'll say print name of I. Okay. So let's see what the output would be. What what I'm building? Oh, sorry. I is not an integer, right? Sorry. Only print I. Not name of I. So it is giving me and see the individual element of the string. Each output S, A, M, I, and R. How it is working? So when the first time you execute, right? So it is string, you know the index, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Correct? So when it is starting on the i, the i value would be zero. Okay. So it will say print zero. Zero means zero to index value. Yes. Now the loop will continue because the, this is a loop. It will put the first index, second index, third index, fourth index, and till it stops or the string ends here. Till that time it will print the value. Does that make sense? Is it good? Yes. Very good, Anna. Any questions you have? So small request. Uh, I think I got some issue with my laptop. I'm not able to see the screen, but I listen your class. Oh, is it for everybody or? Uh... Yeah, for me also. For me. Yeah, I'm also facing the same problem. Actually, we are in uh, in the same uh, same city, sir. Uh, uh, outside the temple, the weather is not so good. Probably it might have affected the internet or something like that. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Okay. So this is the for loop exactly. Okay. So let's take another example here. Let's take, I have, here I am taking an example on a, one more example here. So let's say I have one 
salary underscore list. Okay. So for few employees, I have one, I have created one salary list where I'm giving some salary. So let's check 1200, 2300 and 3500. And I have another list called commission. Okay, there I'm giving the commission as equals to let's take uh, 0 0.75. This is the commission which I want to give to the individual elements of the salary. So what does this ask here is that so we have one salary, then we have a commission. So I want to create another list, new list, which will be salary into commission. So it is mean it means colored into 0.75 automatically. Next salary 2300 into 75, 0.75, 3500 into 0 0.75. That's how I want to do it. Now here the problem the while loop will work because that the list have a more than one element right? so for the each element of the salary list i want to uh, give the commission by multiplying with the 0.75 and i will put it into the new list can somebody explain me how we can do it here at least in a rough idea how to do this samir can you please repeat the question because i can't see in screen oh so i have a salary list the list okay. have three salaries okay any figure you can take it 1200 to 300 and 3500 i'm keeping it and i have okay. a uh, one one more variable called commission that is 0 0.75 0 0.75 so what okay. my requirement is i want to create a new list the updated list which would be salary into commission for each individual so listing to that uh, whatever figure you're saying you i'm not able to see the screen but yeah um some list. just list star that uh the whatever i'm not seeing Maybe you're saying will give you the output what it will give you let's say for example a list salary list name is salary is equal to your values into hmm. whatever amount you're saying into but, uh, amount or interest whatever you said but the thing is the list having three items it could be four items how we will do for all the four items second the second question the, is after mm -hmm. that i need to create a new list not existing list yes sir so if no. that uh, say for example that list name is salary mm -hmm. salary star uh, three is stored in a different it is again assigned to a different yeah. way one one one, one second star three means Means I don't know. I am not seeing the screen, sir. Commission. I'm saying. Commission is fixed, right? Yeah. You you want 0.75 to be multiplied to everything, right? So every, salary. Every, each every salary. Yeah. So the the list name salary star 0.75. But 0.75, how it will work for each and every content of the list? There are it's three elements in the list, right? Yeah. It the if. Index. If, if you multiply the name of the list with the point uh, commission, it, will it mm. not reflect every value of that list? How it will be reflect? Unless until your index is not moving, how you can do it? I mean, it's just a vague Don't try. Mm -hmm. uh, first, you declare a list, uh, empty list, saying commission mm -hmm. commissioned list mm -hmm. as an empty list, and then mm -hmm. use a for loop where mm -hmm. you are doing the for i in salary list. Then you mm -hmm. put uh, the multiplication, what the other person was, salary, salary list. Salary of I. Salary I of I star commission. Into commission. But how you will, uh, how, yeah. yeah. But how you will idea. create a new new list out of that, that items? Then, uh, uh, see, commission, you are creating a list. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll create see. it. So, first of uh, all, let's take, okay. So, we I can say, take uh, for loops, sir. Okay. Anyway, it we need to use the for loop. For loop is we will be definitely will be used. I empty lists, so, two square brackets. Yeah. Huh? Next for loop. Yeah, we need to create a blank list. Fine, then for loop. Okay. For, for I, I in, in salary list. Mm -hmm. Colon. Mm -hmm. Um. Then salary uh, of I updated list equals updated list of I updated underscore list of i 
of i okay of i equals salary, uh, salary list, of I. list of i into commission commission yeah That's so it. wherever the i is getting iterated it will get iterated everywhere and but, but uh, you get here i is not one two three right here the i is the values index right i is the index it is taking no, it know. will take the values i believe for Saying i in uh, this index yeah. is out of range think once what i have done wrong here list index out of range i'm getting if you do like that why Hmm? Anybody can tell me. I'm not seeing anything, so I'm unable to show. No, whatever you told, that is the thing. I'm right. Nothing else. Extra, I have not written in. Um, what if we give salary list? Uh, hmm? Um, bracket three. I mean, there are only three. But less salary is of three means it will take the third index, right? Zero, one, two, three. Oh, I'm sorry, automatically two. Will be out of range. Two. Then two it will be only applicable to this only, right? But I so want the individual, right? Each we can individual. use length of salary as the limit. Length of salary. What I will do? Length of salary here. Length of the list. Mm -hmm. For i less than uh, length of the salary. Salary list. For i less than length of the salary. Again, we'll take another loop. Uh, uh, second for loop. Sub, mm -hmm. sub loop. Then we will use why, uh, why will complicate all this thing this much? Why can't you use a function called list to the list which you created? The operating list, the blank list. So, blank list, then for loop we started for i in the salary list. Then I can say updated list, which is the my uh, the blank list. I can use a function called append, right? That use it very simple. Ah, uh, yes, right? append. It will get started. then uh, I'll take uh, an i into commission. Uh -huh. Simple, right? So I here represent is all the salaries. So to start at 1200, then 2300, then 3500 based on the index that I'm taking it and compatibly into my commission. If I run this, it will give you the output. Right? Make sense? Okay. Sir. Yes. Don't don't complicate things. It's very simple things, simple related. Why you will take two loops unnecessary for all these things? Not required. Okay. So be smart. So you know the that's what that's where your list methodology will work. Like you learn all the methodology. Now which one you want to use where? That's where the trick is there. Okay. I'm giving an exercise to you that you can do it. Not now, but uh, you can note it down. If you are not able to see, just note it down on your notebook as well. So I have one list called customer underscore ratings. Okay, so you are going to an restaurant or any anywhere right now, right? Where you are buying something or whatever you are purchasing something. So after that, they are asking to feedback, right? Feedback form. Then you will give the star rating, right? Customer rating, like five, four, three, four, two. You are giving it, right? So like that, one customer, we are facing, you are working for a company and you have asked the employees to give the customer ratings here and we are storing inside a list. So, but the trick here is that I'm storing like this. I'm storing five stars. So it's a combination of your string and numbers, both. So it is like five stars. Then let's take somebody has given me four stars okay 
then suppose somebody has given me three stars like that they have given me the ratings here okay five stars four stars three stars and everything now our ask is this is a combination of string and the number now somebody asked you the question is that can get me the average rate how we will get what is my average rating for my company so it is actually 5 plus 4 plus 3 how many entries will be there so in this case i am giving three values here so 5 plus 4 plus 3 divided by 3 so that will be my average here so but how we will do it here in this case any any thoughts you got the question okay so how we will do it we don't need to try now but you can take it offline the question is how we will do it here uh, using find uh, stars or find space uh, then remove stars you get uh, mm -hmm. five four and three mm -hmm. and, so do uh, we have any oh sorry So, do we have any sum function in this sum of? Yeah, I explained you the sum function, right? Yeah, yeah. So, sum of the sum of that list values by the length of the. But this this time the your list is having integer and string both, right? How you can do the sum? Okay, uh, I know I didn't see that. Okay. Okay. So take we your time. See, we'll mm -hmm. take the uh, type of uh, list only. We will go into the loop. Only if it is integer. It's not like that. So I'm saying you have a entry called five stars. Five number stars. It is there. It is string. So the first thing you, you need to do is you need to extract the five here. Five from here, four from here, and three from here. That is your first job. Okay. If you are able yeah. to retrieve that integer values, whatever there, then you can convert it to explicitly to the integer. Then you can do that. That's fine. But first task is to extract the integer part. From the string okay. and convert it into integer. Okay. Okay. So was I right, sir, by saying that using what is that? Uh, using the find method. Find method first. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can take a find. Yes, you can take a find method. And try it out. The space is space, space. space. Yeah, and you can do that. And here, yeah. if you see this, uh, but if you see this current input, right? All the integers are at the first position. Luckily, mm. so you can do a string slicing. Method. There are different. Uh, you just you can you can try it anything okay uh, yesterday you had uh, thought how to do the addition uh, but then average didn't come you said you will be explaining it oh. you used length function okay. it didn't we'll, we'll try that. okay i didn't explain that right okay let me yeah so let's take i have a uh, example underscore list so i say there is a number i'm giving direct number here three four five so now if i say print of sum of my example list first let's see the sum is coming or not okay so my sum is there to then i will say divided by length of string this will be my average i think yesterday i was doing the count instead of the, this one so it should be length so this is my sum divided by length. So it will be my average. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So based on this technique, you can write this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now let's discuss one more example here. Uh, list conversion, Samir. List conversion also goes the same way, like how we did anything else. Int of. Ah, yeah. That's correct. Same, okay. same, same, same. same. Okay. So now this is done. Now let's discuss about. I, I think I discuss about the range. You remember the range, range function. When you are using the range function, then it will create a sequence of the number and uh, that you can use inside the loop as well so let's let's talk an example of this 
So suppose I'm saying for loop i in range of okay, I'm saying length of any okay. What happened? So print of i. What happened? Any bracket is missing here. This is ten. This is. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. I, you have not attended. Got, got it. So now here, how many? What will be the output here? Can somebody explain? I'm just putting for i in range of length of my name, S A M I R. So if I'm printing the i here, what will be the output? Uh, one, two, three, you, four. Okay. Did you practice the range five on the yesterday class? Five on so. It will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Na? Yeah. Index always started 0, right? How it will be 1? So, yeah, sorry, sorry. So it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right? Make sense? So, now let's take another example here using this. You understand this range now. Others, now your screen is now comes up. Or still the issue? It got frozen, Alison, and your voice is also breaking. Probably internet issue only. Mm. Right. So let's take another example here. I'm saying product underscore list. I have created a product list here, and inside that I have different products. So let's take my phone, and let's take another product I have for laptop. Then suppose I have another product called hardware. So I have three products inside my product list and I have another list called price underscore list. So now here I have the different price for different products. So here let's take 1200, 2300 and let's take 3500. So this product list is there are three products and price list is there are three price here. Okay. So now our ask is to just to print like this product is this price. I want to just uh, print it. How I can print it? So let's start with the range. Here the thing is I can do the length of the string by taking a range of the product list and that many times I want to run my loop. So what, how many products I have? That many times I want to print my, I want to execute my uh, call. Okay. So what I will do here in this, I will say for i in range of length of my product list so that many times i want to execute my loop so if there is a three products then it will run for zero one two if there is a four products then zero one two three four times the product will be exit makes sense yes. is that okay yes okay. now i need to print it print it i just want to print so let's say i want to print the output something like let's say my first product is four I say phone price is 1200 from the next list. Laptop price is 2300. Hardware price is 3500. Something like that I want to print inside that. Okay. So to execute this customized uh, output, I can use the app string. Do you remember the app string? Yes. Yeah. So I will say the product. Okay, then I will use my flower bracket to get the variable. In this case, I want to say product underscore list of i. So the first product it will come in the i. This question will become phone, then laptop, then hardware. Right? This is the way it will work. Make sense? This is okay. Yes. Yes. Then then I will say cost. And I can take another flower bracket here. I will say Price, price list of, of i. Right? Makes sense. Now, if I run this, hopefully I'll get the output which I'm looking at. So, the product phone cost 100, the product laptop cost this much. Makes sense? 
so you can use this range methodology here to get it to the loops as well okay does that make sense yes yes this is one way to do this okay the same thing uh, if you want to do in a different way there is a standardized function is there for the for loop that is called enumerate function i'll explain you what is enumerate function so the enumerate function uh, is a function which it will return the index and element now i can say index and value at a time at one time you will get all the elements and all the values at, at one go if i pass any list to the enumerate what does it mean let's comment out this the range part i'm just commenting here and instead of this the last liner you can use this way i will say the for loop i comma v so i will take i as a index and v as a value okay in i will say enumerate function enumerate function inside that suppose i will pass my my product list so what will happen in this case if i print i comma v let's let's try to see what the output you are getting here let's try to run this you'll get see zero one one laptop two hardware so it will give you the index number of the list along with the well right you getting this this is a standardized way nowadays people are using the enumerate mode because it have the flexibility to give you the index and the value both at, at one go from the it will make sense uh, how can we use enumerate to get the same output as you got previously the correct, product correct that this yeah we will we'll come to that now tell me how to get it now you have your index number of your product list and you have the value of the this one now how you will do tell me that you need to tell me now you have all the stuffs um just think just think once i was about to ask this question to you to everyone just think add once. another variable no add mm -hmm. another form no, it is no. not required in the print only we, we can we can execute the same kind of print i will use it but how to execute this now you understand that your i is your index and v is your value now how you mm. use it now you will write the product product underscore list of mm -hmm. uh, i i cost price mm. list v press list of v or let's it is let product it. list v and price list i yeah, okay let's let's run that i'm giving both as a i i only okay and i'm commenting this part so what do we we'll get it here what it right both have the same index right so here i have a three products here i have a three price so it is just giving the zero value only what do you think so right so here the advantages of the enumerate we will we'll come to the different exercise on the enumerate we'll thoroughly discuss the enumerate one more time so enumerate function is very helpful because when you use with the list right it will take out the index and along with the value of the list that's why it is very much powerful i can say okay got it the point any questions you have as of now what is the purpose of v there we'll come to that don't worry okay. we'll come to that so, yeah now try to explain understand that so enumerate will be i'll 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 give you some examples on this don't worry but uh, understand that this is the standard right now in the python for the for loop so you can use the enumerate function to get the index and the value at one go okay Does that makes sense is this clear whatever you discuss the string methods your normal for loops we discussed that how we can iterable the string we yeah. saw the how to iterable the list then we use how to iterable to the range yeah. and we saw the how to iterable to the enumerate as well so couple of things we discussed okay so based on that uh, today i will give you bunch of questions okay? which will be properly practice that and come out tomorrow that so that i can start the while loop and some other examples on the for then we will continue the like continue and the exception handling for this okay please do practice this otherwise you will forget i will give you five to six questions or seven questions around 
the loops only, different loops concepts. Okay, fair enough. And what about the two assignment on the Python? Is it done? Uh, doing the second one. Yeah, doing first one is done. Yeah, first, first one, one is done. Yes. And what about those? What about those SQL assignments? Other than the month over month and year over year, almost everything is done. Okay. What about others? Yeah, same. same. Except those. Okay, just, so this will be this Friday will be a last. So submit it so that I will try to uh, the Saturday classes. We are doing a Saturday class here this time, right? For Monday to Friday for you. Friday class. So yes. the Friday class of yours that I will the first 30 minutes I will explain you the month over a month or year over year, whichever doubt you have, I'll explain you. Then uh, then whoever got the assignment, I got the email by the Friday or by Thursday night. For them, I will release the the post. Okay, that's a thing that you need to submit in one week again. Okay. So, Samir, before the uh, sending the project, is it possible you share the like once we submit the assignment, can you share the solution of this assignments to us? Yes, I will. Do that. I'll do that. Yeah, because you know, I, I mean, I frankly say like, you know, I try to do the assignment, but I'm not like, you know, I'm learning SQL first time. So there are here and there. I was confused. I, I don't know if I was writing the right query or not. So if I, I don't, the expectation yeah. here is uh -huh. not I, at the last class also I told it's not like the hundred percent expectation is here. So I don't mm -hmm. want everybody needs to be complete all the assignment every each and every questions. Mm -hmm. First thing. Second thing is I try to I have asked to complete the assignment. Whichever yeah. is left is fine. It's not like left in the sense you will do only two assignment and rest of eight is left. It's not like that. At least somehow you need to complete seventy to eighty percent somehow. Give yeah. me the, that so I will make sure that okay, yeah, you guys are trying it. I can give more. That's the intention behind this. Yeah. And few yeah. things I will discuss, which of the question is quite critical, I will discuss that. <coughs> then I will release the project to you so that you can try it out the projects. Yeah, 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 I understand. It's like if you have solution, that would be good. Like, you know, we can just match it when we're confused and we will do it better in the project by, uh, like, you know, correct. Uh, yeah, after, if you have, after, yeah, after the, after the Friday class, <laughs> yeah. once I discuss all the like questions, whichever is critical, then I will on the weekend itself, I release the solution, watch each and every assignment solution so that you can compare your solution to my solution and yeah. based on that, we, we can start. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much, Sami. Thank you. Yeah, and this is Nidhi. I already joined after uh, half an hour ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, I was there. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay.